When I was growing up in South Carolina in the 1950s, we never heard stories about encounters with Bigfoot or families of Bigfoot. When I had my first encounter, I didn't know what they were or what to call them. I think my dad must have known something about them, but he never talked about it. We lived on a farm deep in the country, somewhere between Honea Path and Greenwood. We kept all kinds of livestock, chickens, hogs, and a few cows and a couple of goats. Along with them, we had dogs and cats, and there was no grass around the house because the hogs and the chickens and the other animals roamed freely about eating everything in sight, not to mention the damage that we three girls could do. And mom and dad didn't have any sons, but my sisters and I were just as tough and wild as any boys could be. Dad worked our little farm while holding down a job at the fabric mill in Ware Shoals. They wove and printed the fabric and then shipped it off to various other places to be made into clothes and such. And at that time, they were printing camouflage material. And that meant the deer hunters around there always had cheap, misprinted camo cloth to take home to their wives so they could make them into hunting clothes. I remember one hot Saturday afternoon in the summer, Dad was busy with the cows, and Mom asked me to run to the store for her to pick a few items up. It was a little corner store set on an intersection in the middle of nowhere. Normally, my older sister would go with me, but she wasn't feeling well that day, and my younger sister was still too little. The store was only a half mile away, and there were almost never any cars on the road. But I was old enough to know better than to talk to strangers. Even if there had been a car, it was likely to be someone we knew. Now, that was back when Cokes were a nickel and Snicker bars were three cents. I took my time getting to the store. I remember a turtle that needed poking with a stick. A few insects were begging for inspections, and I couldn't resist the wildflowers that were in full bloom. But I eventually got there and handed my list over to the storekeeper. It wasn't a long list, but there was enough on it to tell me that Mama was getting ready to bake us a cake. It was hot that day. I knew I would practically have to run back to keep the butter from melting. Well, I liked running. For a 10-year-old, I was pretty fast. Well, on that day, I was determined to break my old record. Lucky for me, I thought, I had wasted enough time getting there that the sun was beginning to sink behind the trees to the west. The shadows were getting longer, but that meant the trip home wouldn't be quite so hot as the walk there. I had just about reached the long dirt drive that led to our farmhouse when I noticed an awful dead smell that wasn't there earlier. It seemed to be coming in whiffs on the breeze from somewhere inside the tree line. Now, those woods are thick with pines and so thick that it was almost like night once you got past the outer boundary. We never ventured in there, ever. Dad used to tell us that there might be bears in there. Well, we never saw one, but if Dad said they were there, we believed him. We didn't need to play in those old woods anyway. There was more than enough space to play in the sunlight or under the big shade trees on the farm. As I turned to head up the drive, that smell got stronger, and I shifted my groceries from one arm to the other. The rattle of that paper bag muffled another noise that I was sure didn't come from me. It was a crackling sound like sticks breaking somewhere beyond the trees. And then I caught a glimpse of something moving to my right, just inside the tree line. I assured myself that I was hearing squirrels or birds and letting my imagination make giants out of shadows. I was making good time, but I couldn't seem to outrun the sun. I was sure it was dropping faster than usual that afternoon. And even though the fear was starting to creep in, I had to slow down. It was still pretty hot and humid, and I was getting tired. The house came into view, and so did something else. I didn't quite understand what I was looking at. I just knew that something tall and dark was standing at the edge of the trees ahead of me. There was an embankment there that went up the right side of the drive, and the tall trees came to a point at the top of it. That was where the taller, slender, black, hairy figure stepped out. I could see its face clearly. It was almost human, but not quite. 
I had seen pictures of monkeys, but this thing didn't have a snout or a nose that protruded like one. Its ears were small, and it had a pronounced brow line with deep-set eyes that looked black or very dark brown. The hair on its body was kind of long, but more so on its arms and around its head. It didn't really have a neck, but its arms were long and almost to its knees, or maybe they just looked that way because it was stooped a little. I thought it was smiling at me, but it was such a creepy-looking grin, and it made its wide mouth almost sinister. I don't think it was trying to scare me, but it sure was doing a good job of it. In an effort to figure out what I was looking at, I took a few steps closer to it, and in turn, it took another step down the embankment. And then I took another step, and it took another, until it was all the way to the bottom. That's when I stopped and I started screaming. Now, kids have a high-pitched scream that runs right through you. Out there in the country, it really traveled. It was enough to bring Dad running with his double-barrel shotgun. I never thought of my dad as being small until I compared him to the monster. It must have been twice my dad's height. The creature went back up the embankment, and it looked like it dissipated into the dark forest. To this day, I'm not sure if my dad ever saw it. He had a confused look on his face, and I never heard him shoot. Either he didn't see it, or he was afraid of shooting me by accident. He stood there and waited as I ran to him, and then we both went inside. I don't know what I was looking at that day, but I do now. I'll never know what he wanted. Maybe he smelled what was in the bag and he was hungry. I doubt anyone really knows what they are or how they manage to hide so well for their size. But what I do know now is that I do believe in Bigfoot.